as an elementary school teacher, your job is to teach your students how to read and write and become effective members of the school system. But now they're throwing STEM education at you, so how do you cope? Hello my science friends, my name is Danielle and I am the founder of a company called Make Them Mainstream, helping parents and educators teach their daughters and female students about STEM in early STEM education. And just in case you don't know, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. I'm right here every Wednesday talking about an influential female in STEM and every Thursday talking about female STEM education. And today we're going to be talking about STEM learning objectives. As a teacher, you have a lot on your plate, especially as an elementary school teacher. You have all of the subjects to teach, and now they're throwing STEM education at you, and you might be going, ah, just pulling your hair out, like, how do I do this? How will I ever, ever get to teach everything. I completely understand how you feel and it should be frustrating. There's so much to teach and there's just not enough time in the day. So that's why I wanted to talk about some STEM learning objectives and how to keep it simple. I believe in simple and effective instruction. Adding a bunch of fancy equipment or following fads just isn't helpful or necessary. So focus on what is most important, which is making sure that you have a stellar curriculum that both engages and educates your students. And you wanna engage and educate your students in the most effective way. And in order to be efficient, you have to have simplicity. So as a teacher, you have to focus on the most core values in order to make sure that your students are getting the most out of the lesson. In order to keep things simple, you have to focus on three STEM learning objectives. Yes, only three. And they are curiosity, problem solving, and communication. So let's explore these three STEM learning objectives before we discuss why they relate back to reading and writing. Curiosity. If you've been here for a while, you know that I'm all about curiosity and I talk about it a lot because curiosity is the core, core characteristic of being an amazing scientist. And that's because science is philosophy. You can't have science without first asking why or how come or I wonder what would happen if. When you encourage your students' curiosity, you are cultivating a fundamental character trait of a scientist. And curiosity can come in so many different kinds of forms, and one type of curiosity doesn't relate to any specific STEM or STEAM field. Next, let's talk about problem solving. Anyone in any profession is going to have to have effective problem solving skills. And those skills are developing at a young age. Allowing your students to develop their problem solving skills is only going to make them more productive members of society, whether they want to be a scientist, engineer, entrepreneur, or an educator just like you. Now let's talk about communication. After your students have become curious and they found a solution to a problem, they need a way to communicate that information to other people. And that's why communication is the last simple STEM learning objective. No matter what, your students are going to need to know how to communicate effectively, especially if they are going to go into the STEM fields. Scientific writing may be different than writing literature, but it still requires exceptional writing skills. Scientists must be able to write factual and easy to understand information. They have to take these complex ideas and make them more accessible to the average person. And that's why writing is so, so important for scientists. Continuing to teach your students how to read and write is obviously crucial, especially if you're an elementary school teacher, and they should be integrated into your STEM curriculum. Let's relate STEM back to reading and writing now, because STEM shouldn't just be a bunch of hands-on activities. Now, hands-on learning is crucial, but it's not the end-all be-all. Plus, you still have a job to do as an elementary school teacher. You have to teach your students how to read and write. This should not go by the wayside when you're teaching STEM, and focusing on curiosity, problem solving, and communication will allow you to still focus on reading and writing. So what does that look like in the classroom? Let's take a look at these STEM learning objectives inside 
your classroom. Supply your students with reading material. Ask your students to read a full, age-appropriate article that relates to science, and bonus points if you also relate this to another subject that you're teaching. After they finish reading the article, break them out into pairs to allow them to discuss and digest exactly what they've read. While they do this, circle the classroom to check for understanding. Now your students are communicating with each other. This allows them to break down the material that they just read and will prepare them for a writing prompt later on. Next, you can either go straight to the writing or break out into a Socratic seminar. Allow your students to talk about their ideas is out loud that they talked about with their pairs and ask even more questions. And then you can now hear everything that's going on and you can dive in or interject whenever someone needs a clarification about something. This is curiosity at work and it allows you to be curious with your students and also gather the information that they were able to gather from the reading material. So now you know what to teach and now you know exactly what you need to do next because you've heard from all of your students. You've allowed them to communicate and discuss with each other. So next, you can go up to the front of the class and lecture on whatever else they missed in the reading material, and you can fill in those gaps. Or you can jump right to the writing prompt, but what should the prompt be about? The prompt should be about problem solving. Have your students come up with a solution to a problem that the reading material touched on. Writing about their solution allows your students to learn about argumentative writing, fact-based writing, research, creativity, design process, and so much more. Repeat this process as many times as necessary for your students to understand the material. You might be surprised at what you all discover together. Make the mainstream believes in these three STEM learning objectives so much that we created the Female STEM Academy subscription box, which focuses on curiosity, problem solving, and communication. It is a perfect addition to your classroom STEM learning environment. You can add it to a STEM kit or you can allow it to supplement some of your STEM curriculum. To learn more about the Female STEM Academy subscription box, click the link in the description below. Now that you've learned about these three STEM learning objectives, I want to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what are some learning objectives that you have found effective for your STEM education, or how have you found success in your STEM learning environment? I can't wait to discuss with you in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you love this video and want to get even more information, then consider subscribing. And until next time, happy learning.